JBN, we keep you informed. I'm Michelle Jones, and in the news, Thai repair man fatally shot in Spanish Town. A man was gone down along March Ben Road in Spanish Town, St. Catherine, on Wednesday night. The deceased has been identified as 40 year old Thai repair man Dwight Edwards. It is reported that about 9 10 p.m., residents heard explosions and summoned the police. Upon arrival, the body of a man on a bicycle was found with what appeared to be gunshot wounds along the roadway. The body was removed by a funeral home to the Spanish Town Hospital, where it was pronounced dead. No motive has been established. The Spanish Town Criminal Investigation Branch is probing the case. Cops rescue woman from alleged abductor in St. James. A high level source within the St. James Police Force has revealed that the man taken into custody for allegedly attempting to sexually assault a woman on Wednesday afternoon was out on bail for a similar charge. He turned out to be somebody who was already facing a charge of sexual assault, the officer said. The identity of the accused has not yet been made public as he is yet to be charged. However, the officer provided details of Wednesday's incident, which temporarily halted a tour by Minister of Local Government and Community Development Desmond McKenzie. Sometime between 2.30 p.m. and 3 p.m., a female complainant boarded a taxi along Umber Avenue with the intention to reach downtown Montego Bay, the officer said. The driver detoured and went on to Coronaldi Avenue, pulled a knife, and informed of his intention to sexually assault her. She managed to get out of the car and attract the attention of the police who were in the area, the officer continued. The police were part of a team accompanying Mackenzie on a tour of Guild Club lands adjacent to Jared Park. Cops subsequently arrested the man on Melvin Hall Avenue after hearing the woman's screams. The police are continuing their investigations into the matter. Person of interest in teen girls shooting still not in custody. Up to this afternoon, the man listed as a person of interest in relation to Wednesday's shooting of a 15-year-old girl in Tivoli Gardens had not turned himself into the police. The police had given him until noon Thursday to do so. Senior Superintendent Michael Phipps, head of the Kingston Western Police Division, said the teen was in a room with other people who were playing with a gun. The gun reporter went off and the teenager of a St. Catherine address was shot in the upper body. SSB Phipps said the man being sought, known only as Marvin, can assist with the investigation. Truck driver robbed and shot in Monique, St. Anne. A truck driver was robbed of his vehicle and cash before being shot and wounded in Monique, St. Anne, on Thursday afternoon. The injured man, who is said to be 47 and is reportedly from Linstead, St. Catherine, has since been hospitalized in serious but stable condition. It was reported that around 1.15 p.m., the truck driver was at a hardware store in Three Miles, St. Andrew, when a man chartered him to pick up plyboards in Monique, St. Anne. On reaching Monique, the police said it was led to Hull Street to a house where two other men armed with guns were waiting. Police reports are that the gunman attacked and robbed the driver of $35,000, his driver's license, and his Isuzu motor truck, which was reportedly valued at $2.5 million. One of the gunmen fired two shots in his direction and was sitting his right side. The police were informed and was taken to hospital where he was admitted. Police have since launched a search for the truck and the gunmen. The Monique police are investigating. Man on minibus arrested in Manchester following gun seizure. A Clarendon man was arrested following the seizure of a gun and several rounds of ammunition during a traffic stop on the Porous Main Road in Manchester on Wednesday. Reports from a Porous Police saw that about 10 a.m., a team of officers was conducting a vehicle checkpoint in the area when they signaled the driver of a Toyota minibus to stop. He complied. According to the police, a male passenger was seen acting in a suspicious manner. The suspect was accosted, searched, and a browning 9mm pistol containing six 9mm rounds was found in his possession. He was arrested. Man arrested following gun seizure in St. Andrew. A gun and ammunition were seized during an operation by the security forces in Lacey District, Lawrence Tavern, St. Andrew on Wednesday. Reports from the Lawrence Tavern police are that about 6.30 a.m., a joint police military team signaled the driver for white on the stream motor car to stop. The driver complied and a search was conducted. During the search, a 9mm pistol with a magazine containing 12 rounds was found in a hidden compartment, according to the police. The man was arrested in relation to the seizure. His identity has been withheld pending further investigations. 
More victims, more fraud, and more arrests are coming SSL case, says FIT. Seven months after a massive fraud was detected at Stocks and Security Limited, SSL, investigators have uncovered that the number of affected accounts is almost double what was initially reported, increasing the size of the fraud by millions of US dollars. The Financial Investigations Division, FID, announced in a news release Thursday that its probe into the fraudulent activities at SSL have revealed that there are now approximately 70 affected accounts compared to the just over 40 reported in the initial phase of the investigation. It also revealed an entrenched culture of gross mismanagement dating back well over a decade. The investigation is progressing with the application of the highest professional standards. It has taken on new dimensions which are wider than first expected, Director General of the FID, Selvin Hay, noted. The investigation has also identified other fraudulent schemes at SSL, which has resulted in the misappropriation and or loss of numerous investors' funds, amounting to over $10 million, US dollars, he continued. The FID is robustly pursuing various lines of inquiry and taking all the necessary steps to lead evidence-based prosecutions in the court at the appropriate time against all guilty parties to include Jean Ponton, the sole accused perpetrator so far. The investigative process has brought together a variety of local regulatory and law enforcement agencies to include the Financial Services Commission, FSC, and the Jamaica Constabulary Forces, JCF Fraud Squad, the Sistrantund, by investigative partnerships with the U.S.-based Federal Bureau of Investigations, FBI, and the U.K.-based Forensic Accounting and Intelligence firm, Kroll, as well as relevant member countries of the Asset Recovery Interagency Network for the Caribbean, the release stated. Meanwhile, the FID's Principal Director of Investigations, Keith Darren, added, the duration of the fraudulent activities, as well as the variety of fraud, has resulted in the investigative process taking an extended period. Prosecuting financial crimes requires meticulous evidence gathering to ensure success in court and to follow the money so that any illicit funds or assets may be identified, restrained and recovered. Before the next court date, we anticipate the arrest and charge of all the actors involved in the multiple fraudulent schemes recently discovered, Darren continued. There are certain deliberate actions being taken to support increased investigative efficiency. Our investigators have contacted the affected parties via email and phone calls, but the responses from some have been short of encouraging. We continue to appeal to those affected to contact the FID. It is a critical part of seeking justice through the courts. Two men charged for Delhi Gregor Park fire bombing. Fitz Bailey, the Deputy Commissioner of Police in charge of the crime portfolio, announced on Thursday that two men have been charged in connection with the double murder and the burning of 11 houses on Workers Avenue in Gregor Park in Portmore, St. Catherine, on August 12. Charge are Nigel McClarty, a 24 year old mechanic of Christian Penning Gregor Park, and Odin Fowler, 21, of a Portmore Villa Gregor Park address. Fowler was charged with two counts of murder, 10 counts of arson possession of prohibited weapons, unauthorized possession of ammunition, and being part of a criminal organization. The exact charges laid against McClarty were not made clear. The incident occurred about 3.50 a.m. when criminals set fire to homes at 44 Walkers Avenue. During this incident, 28-year-old Ranil Orton, otherwise called Rum Punch, was shot and killed. 72-year-old Naomi Gokal was in one of the 11 houses, died at hospital after being severely burned in the fire. DSP Bailey said that over the past five months, there have been a number of violent crimes in Gregor Park, including several murders, four shootings, and two incidents of arson. Most of the murders reported in the Gregor Park area have been attributed to ongoing intra- and intergang conflicts. The major areas of concern are Bangor Gully, Mexico, Christian Penn, Train Line, Walkers Avenue, and Watson Grove, he said. JBN will keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.